Hello everyone, Pally Tim here. Welcome back to Heroes of the Storm. Hope you guys are having a great day today. We are revisiting Kerrigan after I played this many, where'd she go? This many games. So there's two here, there's a bunch of stitches, some Kerrigan, some stitches, some Kerrigan. This was our original video that we did. So quite a few games of Kerrigan since then. Definitely more than any other hero on my list. And I have an understanding of how I like to play her now, although how I've been playing Kerrigan may not be the meta way of doing it, if there is such a thing anymore. I actually find myself really going after mercenary camps and trying to keep map pressure up versus enemy players. And I do most of my team fighting around objectives. I don't do too much team fighting in between that, but it's been working out for me pretty well. Here's the build. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves on the Battlefield of Eternity. We are going to go for the Fury of the Swarm at level one. I do really like Assimilation Mastery. I think never having to go back for mana or health is, is pretty cool. But Fury of the Swarm, I think, benefits my playstyle a little bit more. So gain 10% more Assimilation Shields from basic attack after casting Ravage, Kerrigan's next basic attack within three seconds. Splashes for 100% damage around the main target. So that means we're able to jump in with our Q, which has two charges, and the charges reset if we kill something within one and a half seconds of jumping to it. And we are able to splash AoE around everywhere at the same time. So as far as lane clear for a melee assassin, I don't know if it gets much better than this. I really don't. You just kind of pull this shit in. This was an account level 40 URL. This is where we see if she's a smurf or not. Put the stun there because I want my globe. I think she got it anyway. Uh, she seemed like she was contesting all right. We'll just queue in. Q in. All right, so that's that's how I play this game. Yeah, we're probably gonna get dongled on in lane by someone who actually has sustain, but I feel like it's still pretty good. I feel like I like it. A lot of times what I do is just put my W right underneath the minion wave too. I'm not really able to generate shields right now, but we can pull the minion wave in. Q, auto attack, Q. You see what I mean? It just kind of clears everything super fast. And we actually do, even though I'm getting beat the fuck up, we do generate a decent amount of shielding from doing that as well. <laughs> Get the fuck off me. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go back for an early base, way earlier than I would have liked to have, but you know what? That's kind of what happens when you're just walking into your URL, so we're gonna play a little more cautiously with it now. She does, of course, have a shit ton of sustain. Our team should be doing pretty good down there, though. They seem like they're pretty poised for a victory. Uh, Yorel missing. We can take mercenary camps really, really easily on Kerrigan as well, and oftentimes we barely lose any health or shields doing it. Yorel's not the same case, so if she's still missing, we might want to go check this. This might be stupid. She's gonna try to knock me back. I, I was not expecting her to be able to do that so seamlessly, honestly. I thought she'd be missing a lot more mana or a lot more health. I didn't expect it to happen. I really didn't. All right, uh, we do have our sippy cup in 27 seconds. I mean, she's out of mana, so this is like the time to melee her. Even with the increased melee shielding, you can barely fucking tell it's there, dude. It's barely noticeable. It's pretty shit. Like, I was even cleaving a whole minion wave there. Could you tell? I fucking couldn't. We have five seconds left on our sippy cup. We're also gonna take kinetic fulmination here, which is gonna make our combos combo for a little bit more. So. Like that. And then we'll just misclick that auto attack and she'll get out of here like nothing was wrong. All right, clean up this camp and then go join our friendly team. They did take a mercenary camp at a really good time. We got a lot of healing from that sippy cup, so we can go join them now. We have a dingo and a sergeant hammer with a Taronda's hunter's mark. So really, we should never lose any of these races on the objective, I feel like. Uh, this enemy team is running away. We'll try to land the combo. The combo was a miserable failure. It was just terrible. 
We are CC'd probably until the end of time. We do have some Tyrande healing coming our way. I don't think it's going to quite be enough. So this is when I have to make the decision to kind of hold my ground and try to use all of the abilities that I possibly can. It can be very, very difficult on Kerrigan to survive in team fights when you just don't have the option of dealing damage. Uh, one thing I found playing through, you know, quick match during the middle of the day is that, you know, most of your team comps aren't very organized. So you'll have a shit ton of assassins, for instance, like a five man assassin comp. And in that setting for Kerrigan, it is so extremely difficult for her to actually, number one, land any abilities on the enemy team. That's hard enough as it is. Uh, but also, like, keep up with characters like Genji, like Kira, who are constantly zooming in and out of team fights, making your life really hard. Uh, it's, it's fucking difficult to deal with, man. Another failed combo, that's okay. We don't need it, everything's fine. Uh, we're just going to keep using our Ravage whenever we can and AoEing because of that Ravage. You know, maybe in this comp when I knew I was going to be in the off lane versus a, a bully like Urel, maybe I would have been better off with the Assimilation Mastery, but we don't know for now. Uh, we will take up Boundless Fury at level 7. This one is fantastic, dude. It allows you to use your Q so much more often just to get around team fights and be significantly more mobile. We'll drop that there on her, pull her back in. And we'll just... I'm just trying to use my Q on minions there. I think it got some hero priority. Uh, so we clicked on her instead. I was just going to use the minions and then try to... Um, keep resetting our Ravage by hitting other minions and just splashing damage to her while she was there. You can see we traded very, very fa favorably. We were able to pick up momentum throughout that entire fight, and we ended up having more shields than Yorel could ever manage to do anything about, which is the ideal, right? That's what, that's what we want. Obviously, if we're missing our abilities, that shielding goes away almost immediately. I'm trying to play a little aggressive because Sergeant Hammer was rotating down. She's going to be able to jump away pretty fast. And she, of course, has the Divine Steed. I'd still say one of the strongest abilities, one of the strongest talents in the whole game. We'll come these up for Sergeant Hammer Splash as well as my own. And, oh, she just out of tower range. That's unfortunate. All right. Not bad. Not a bad setup. I tried to spam my E there. I thought I didn't have enough mana. Maybe I just hit the wrong key, dude. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't have enough mana. I'll pull her back in one more time just to help Sergeant Hammer with the damage. Everyone missing from the top lane, so we are going to be heading back here. The objective is going to be up in just a moment, which means we should get a mercenary camp as well. The enemy team doing that right now, obviously. We should get a little something something on the map to pressure them back a little bit if we're able to. Kind of looks like we missed that window. Tazdingo getting ganked up in the top lane does have Torunda, my love, there to help him out. Uh, hopefully they'll make it out A-OK. -okay. We are going to go for Summon Ultralist. This is just a point and click. Well, excuse me. It's still a skill shot, but I use it as just a stun. So when we see stuff like that happen, I send in the Ultralisk to combo off the Toronda Owl and shit like that. It is very, very good for following up. And you can also do Kerrigan combos off the spawn of the Ultralisk as well. I mean, that's not a bad idea either. Friendly team is pr looking pretty tied up with the enemy team right now. Yorel moving forward once again to cost some space. Toronto way too deep. Let's try to get a combo here. The combo does miss everything. All right. survived longer than I thought <laughs> I would, honestly. Uh, Sergeant Hammer and the Dingo are still able to do a shit ton of damage to this objective. Hammer actually doesn't have vision of it right now. She's in complete stealth, choosing not to attack. Oh, she did have vision. She was just choosing not to attack. <laughs> Will they be able to find her? She is in stealth right now. Oh, she attacked! Ah, I'm coming, I'm coming this way, I'm coming this way. I swear I'm going to land a combo, too. It's going to happen. Kerizim jumping in onto our sieged up friend here. Well, that combo didn't land. But did we force him to go the other direction? I like to think we did. If I can pressure this thing and kill it, I'd be pretty happy. They are running away right now. We already know that. We can see the map. Uh, looks like Rainer is going to get out with his little spaceship intact for now. Oh. I want it. I want it dead. Dingo moving up. Let's send in the Ultralisk on J The Ultralisk got stunned by Vala when it spawned. How unfortunate is that? 
One sippy cup remains in this lane for the enemy team. Oh, very nice BFG. We have four seconds left on another stun. I would love to actually stun someone today to show you that I know how to do it. Wait, didn't he just use lead? All right, well, I was gonna stun him. Then he got away. All right. <laughs> so with how my combo accuracy has been in this game, uh, Psionic Pulse probably would have been a little bit better. It would allow us to get guaranteed damage out on people rather than kind of wishing and hoping for the maximum hit possible with, with you know, our W, but I feel like we're okay. Our Tirana just left the game. As you can see, we grabbed that camp no problem. What the Kinetic Fulmination is actually doing at level four is every time we deal damage to anything, it's going to be giving us a stack that will increase the damage on our next W. So if we jump in with Ravage and then auto attack, the Ravage counts as one, the auto attack counts as one, and then, oh. guys, I think we just give this. I think we just uh, give that one up. It's just a camp, that's all right. Johanna up in the top lane. Will she be able to make it down to help Taronda? I don't know. We'll send in the Ultralisk to try to persuade them to leave. Ultralisk didn't get a stun, but that's okay. Uh, did we sippy? I think we did. All right, little ulti, stay safe. Uh, we are gonna go for Volatile Power. It's the one that I like the most. It gives you more shields based on the damage that you're doing. Uh, which a lot of our survivability on this character comes from literally just dealing damage whenever possible. So by allowing us to get more shielding for these little pokes and prods that we can do versus the enemy team, it can give us more confidence to go in and really pressure someone if we know that we're going to have more defenses waiting on us. That's the way I like to think about it anyway. Yurel once again moving in. She is going to use her ultimate. Let's go ahead and put the stun right underneath her here. Pull these guys in. Ravage around a little bit. The seven-sided strike is happening, but of course it's on multiple players, so it's not going to do as much damage as it could have otherwise. There's one kill. We'll try to pull Vala in towards us. Drop the stun on Vala as well. She's going to back up, move back into me, and somehow I was on the same screen as my entire team, but it felt like I was doing that in Vala myself the entire time almost. Whatever, the objective's going well. Sergeant Hammer actually sieged up in a really beneficial position here. She can see both sides, maybe a little bit away from her tanks there, but it looks like we're gonna win this objective, no problem. Up in the top lane, we have this mini wave pushing as well. That the enemy team has not answered, and it's doing a pretty good job. Murden showing up late into the party is going to stun our dingo. But it didn't even matter. All right, we're gonna join our friendly team for a little push down in the bottom lane. We have 27,108 damage, rather, which is third on our team. I'm okay with that. I feel like it's a decent number. I would like an opportunity to take more camps. I don't feel like I've been doing that at all. Looks like we just sacrificed our hammer to the gods. Uh, can I get in on Vala? I don't really think I can. The enemy team is pretty split right now. I'm just going to focus on auto attacking until she thinks about moving away. Uh, we'll stun with the Ultralisk right now. The combo miss. That's okay. Ravage. 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 No more Ravages. There we go. Onto the building now with the Ultralisk as well as the rest of the team at our back. You could slow her down. I can miss a combo. Oh, we got blown the fuck up. I don't know if this is the best place for us to be right now. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm saying no to this, boys. We're going to pick up Painful Spikes at level 16. This is going to increase the damage of our W ability once again. But this time, whatever we hit with our W takes increased damage from all sources. So, great. All right. I mean, I was going to do that, but fine. I guess I won't. Um, so we can use our W ability on camps like this. Like, like I think I said in my intro, I kind of take camps too much, I feel like. Maybe that's not really what my focus should be. But that's what we've been doing, and it's kind of been working out for me. Uh, the enemy team moving in on us here. We don't have the dingo by our side, but that should be okay. We're going to let Johanna initiate pretty hard here before I even think about moving in. Kind of split off from the team now. Let's back it up to our hammer. 
Urel still moving in. Combo here onto Karazim. It does land as well. Did you see it? The Ultralisk going out. We're coming in and we're auto attacking, boys. We're coming in and we're auto attacking. I don't think it's going to be enough. I don't think it's going to be enough. We're back in. It's fine. Thank you for the heals. Always appreciate that sweet, sweet healer. Now, we only have 900 health right now, which is kind of on the low side, but I still think that we can move in and tank this camp no problem. Uh, we just need to group them up on our hitbox, send out the Q or the W, and then use our Qs to AoE. And just look how much shielding we're actually generating here with our talent selection. It's pretty good. Like, if you can really get in fights and land your combos and even just land your Qs and jump around and auto attack a little bit, it, you can get so much survivability from this. However, this talent at level, what was this, 13? Does have some downsides. So while you do generate more shielding in your time of need, that shielding will not last as long. So if you're ever CC'd really hard, or let's say haymakered out of a fight, something like that, uh, then that can cause you to come back in with zero shields, whereas in other situations, you might come back in and still have that, you know, 2,000 shields that you generated for yourself. Yorel looking like she wants to move in. We're just going to drop that stun right underneath Muradin. Try to run away from this enemy team's Vala here, which I think we did okay. We don't have a Sippy Cup available, but I can pull in the enemy team's Karazim. Tried to go in for the stun. The stun didn't quite work out. We're backing up. We're dropping stuns on Muradin this time and just trying to survive. Where's the Ultralisk? Oh, they killed her! Uh, so we do lose our main hero damage, our main uh, immortal damage at the beginning of this, uh, but <laughs> we're, we're kind of on the core. We kind of have core pressure. If we could do anything to keep him here, that would be very beneficial for us. Uh, we do see Karazim moving in on our Taronda. The stun almost connecting there, actually. Jimmy shooting us back. Johanna moving in. Do we have a stun on Johanna? What does she have for her ults? Wow, I'm actually surprised they back up that much. Uh, we might be able to deal decent damage here. I mean, I kind of doubt it. Jimmy going back in. We don't want that to happen. He does see us with his Banshee. He did scout us. Two seconds on Sergeant Hammer respawning. Top lane has a massive push against it right now. Jimmy is gonna get comboed. There we go. We made it happen. Vala stun taken down. Yorel sitting in here trying to make it happen. Um, Karazim punching me instead of the Immortal. I don't think that's the right call. And he is not gonna be comboed because he's a dirty fucking cheater. Yorel does finish off the objective for her team, but at what cost? Uh, the answer is at the cost of their top lane because I'm about to go get it, I think. Oh, the friendly team pinging to go core. Oh, this is exciting. All right, let's go for the Assimilation Blades. Every time I deal auto attack damage, it just increases my auto. Anytime I deal any damage, actually, it increases my auto attack damage. Dude, these are the plays I like to see. We're going to stun underneath the stun of the Ultralisk and Ravage into the Murd in there. That's going to be a pretty fast kill. Pulling back. Woo! Our level 20 damage, man. It skyrockets. It skyrockets. Hey, well, I hope you can see a difference in between this and my last time playing Kerrigan. I've probably played around 20 games, if I had to guess, and things have been getting better. She is super susceptible to stuns, to silences, to roots. Anything that stops her from dealing damage makes it so fucking hard. I'm also not very good at dealing, uh, at actually landing the combos anymore, which makes me really sad because I used to be so great about it. We were talking about it, or so great at it. We were talking about it on Twitch and a lot of people were saying when they increased the baseline movement speed of enemies, Kerrigan wasn't compensated for that in any way. Uh, so, you know, those combos, they don't move any faster. You got you to predict even harder than you had to predict before, which may be the case. But I also think people more so now than ever have more knowledge of the game in general and know how to avoid combos like that. Who knows? That's how we played. I hope you guys liked today, like today's video. We ended up with almost 50,000 damage. If you would like to see the talents we went for, Fury of the Swarm into Kinetic Fulmination, I probably would have been better off with the E talent there. Boundless Fury, I think, is a gigantic damage increase. I also think Summon Ultralisk is very, very strong because you can just chain CC someone even harder 
Uh, volatile power at level 13 has its upsides, has its downsides as well. Maybe Chrysalis would have been better just for some healing. What I don't like about Chrysalis is you're stuck in the cocoon the entire time, and that feels kind of shitty. Uh, painful spikes at level 16. So this I get not only for extra damage in teamfights, but extra damage in lane and getting mercenary camps faster and faster, which usually I do with a little bit more uh, desire. I don't drive. When, you, when you're like really motivated to do something. It's right on the tip of my tongue, dude. I give up. All right, and Assimilation Blades at level 20. Damaging an enemy increases basic attack damage. So any damage that you do. So I assume that if you went for the Maelstrom at 20 or at 10, that would actually have some great synergy with that because you're dealing damage to everything around you. Then you might also be able to take up Unbridled Fury. Ooh, but I don't know. I don't know if that's really worth. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I will see you again very soon. Okay, bye.